Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today's video is about how to get started with Jupyter Notebooks. This is just the basic stuff, so if you are advanced user, please go away now. Just kidding, you are welcome to stay because this is very compact video and I do have some twists by the end that might be interesting still. Today's video is trying to answer uh, what you should be doing after you have set up Jupyter Notebook and you are wondering why it exists, what can I do with it and uh, how, how can I get started. It all begins uh, in the website jupyter.org, so that's uh, the place for the notebooks. And uh, if you haven't already set up your Jupyter, you can start here. I've also got a sweet video for you, see the links below the uh, video. But whatever way you do it, uh, that's how you get started. I wanted to answer before we go to coding, <clears throat> why would you be using Jupyter Notebook? What's the purpose here? Purpose is scientific exploration and experimentation. So idea here behind the Jupyter Notebooks is that, yes, you are able to get some Python code. You are able to combine your documentation. You are able to combine then your experimentation code in Python or some other languages as well that are supported. And then finally, you are able to combine very easily impressive graphs. So you are able to visualize things here. So combination of those and then you are able to package that to single file that you can give to your buddy and they are able to run it in their environment uh, repeat the experimentation exactly as it is you can even deploy these as part of your solution so those are very interesting possibilities so people are using this as uh, like uh, for data science data engineering kind of jobs when they want to understand data play with the data develop something for the data. But I've also been using these for a little bit of development purposes. There is many benefits for that one as well. Now, I will be covering today just, uh, I will be showing the examples with Jupyter Notebook because that's the simplest level. But do note that Jupyter Lab is really much more powerful and I, I will bring another video on that one specifically. But today, let's keep it simple. So, I have already started my Jupyter server. I have already installed it, so I'm good to go. And the classic uh, Jupyter Notebook interface looks pretty much like this one when you start out. So there's nothing in here. And only pretty much only thing I can do here is to start a new notebook. In your case, there might, of course, be multiple different variations of the kernel. But in my case, just one. That's enough for me for today. Um, just worth mentioning that kernel is your runtime environment, your engine. So it defines all the libraries that you have access and all the versions. Uh, and in very typical cases, you might have multiple ones. In my case, it's a little bit different. I, I'm a little bit micromanager, so I'm kind of starting this one from already having defined exactly what I want to run here. Okay, but let's not worry too much about that one. Let's stick to the basics. Uh, doesn't get much more basic than this one. First concept here is a cell. So this one here that I clicked is one of the cells. And uh, within the cell, I'm able to do different things. Now, I mentioned combining documentation and combining code. So let's demonstrate that. For, first of all, I'm able to insert more cells above and below. Again, another video coming up later about the keyboard shortcuts that are really powerful. But for today, I'm going to show you things using these menu items because it's much easier to follow. You will understand what I'm doing here. You can pause the video and see what I did here. Now uh, I have uh, two cells and let's uh, change the type of the first cell. So under cell menu, I can choose from a few different types and markdown is your documentation, documentation cell. So this is going to be a very basic example. Let's give it a name. And then let's use a little bit of markdown to uh, format how I want it to look like. So this is basic markdown formatting command. I can make the headings uh, to be highest level or lower level. Uh, let's do something like this very simply. Now, uh, the cells are like code and to be able to see the results, you want to process them, execute them. And there's a few ways for that one. So option one is to just run them. Quick key is control enter, like so. I can write a little bit of code here. Uh, 
something like this one and quick key was control enter so i can do do that one so here is rendered mark markdown code and here is my executed python code that i'm combining to create a notebook now granted this is not the fanciest scientific exploration thing that i have ever done but as i said today the basics so any python code is valid here and any results you render will be then executed one more thing about the cells and python code is that uh, i can of course do some kind of calculations very basic calculation might be something like this and if i put something as the kind of final value here some, something special happens it becomes an output that i'm able to see and finally i want you to see something uh, here in this area so if i edit this cell let's add uh, one more value here and then I press Ctrl Enter, you can very rapidly see that there was a change. So there was a kind of asterisk symbol here sign signaling that it's being executed. Execution was lightning fast, so you barely saw it. But if I press it again, you can also see that this number keeps on increasing. So this is like my run time when, when I ra ran this one. So you can see if everything was in order. Now I have run this eight times, so I can see the counter here. So basic stuff to understand about the notebooks. Now, before we end the video, this is a good start, but not all of the basic stuff. Um, I have a few more things to show you. One would be naming and saving your notebook. So here I have the notebook name. And if I, if I now press this one, I can name it. Let's say this is Hello World Notebook. And then if I, it's auto-saved already, but if I just make sure and save it here, now I have a checkpoint and I, I have a save. So checkpoint is like uh, your uh, kind of poor man's version of version control. I actually myself prefer to put these files into Git as anything so I can properly version them. I love Git and it's very powerful combined to these notebooks. But if you don't run Git, uh, this is your next best thing. So checkpoints let you go back to previous saves. If you made a blunder, you can go back a few steps and uh, kind of uh, go go back to the world where every, everything was working. Okay. When I save this, it becomes a file. So I think here I now have my explorer and I can show you that my folder now has a single file. It's hello world, I Python notebook. And then uh, I can see when it was saved, of course. So later on, when I come back here, I can just open this one and continue where I was left off. And as I mentioned, I can deliver this notebook to my buddies for kind of, uh, they, they are able to read it, they are able to execute it, provided they have the same uh, kind of kernel and libraries. And that's where your virtual environments come. Uh, you want to also package your environment uh, to be able to repeat the scientific exploration exactly as it was. Okay, uh, what else to talk about the basic th stuff? Well, uh, I want to mention that there is a doc string function. So when I'm at the print function and I want to understand what's going on, I can press shift tab and I get the doc strings uh, for the function. So I get to see quickly the documentation for anything here. Okay, I think that almost covers it for the basic stuff. And then uh, on top of this one, I can build more on later videos. You're welcome to come back and watch those as well. But I wanted to show you something kind of not basic uh, by the end of this video, and that is about how to theme um, your Jupyter Notebook. And this is because we are going to pretty much say bye-bye to notebooks after this video. We are going to dive into labs in the next one and keep staying there because labs are really, really good. But uh, the basic Jupyter Notebook doesn't come with themes at all, so we don't have any stuff for that one. So then what we can do uh, is we can do something with a Python extension. And I'm going to share that with you really quickly. So let's open my Python window. I'm running my notebook server, server here. And now I'm shutting it down. And my extension that I, I can use for my Python notebooks is uh, something called Jupyter Themes. So after I have installed that one, what I can do is list what themes I have. And uh, there is, for example, some dark themes like Sol Solarized Dark and the Groovebox Dark. Let's try Solarized today. So JT minus theme and Solarized 
dark. Okay. And then I'm able to restart my notebook with a simple command like so. This is how I like to run this. Your kind of way might vary. In my case, I just grab this little URL address here, put it in my browser. And then we have solarized theme, so it's looking a little bit different and much, much darker. Just something I wanted to share with you because I haven't seen many people use themes here, but many, a lot of people still prefer dark themes. So you can do that with Jupyter Notebooks as well. My tip would, however, be that just get the lab. The lab is superior. And uh, that's a good segue to my next videos coming up on this channel. Remember to like and subscribe to see more of the videos. I will be doing a series on Python if there is any excitement or activity for this. Let me know. Also, I do take requests. So uh, below my video, there is the comment section. Own the comment section. Uh, leave me some feedback. What I did good here, um, what I did bad here. Is there any kind of mistakes in my videos? Is uh, more, Most importantly, is there any things you would like to see me elaborate the upcoming videos? Because I do take requests as well. Uh, thank you for watching this video. See you in the next ones. Bye-bye.